Okay, this is about the analysis of The Shining that is about an abusive relationship or getting out of an abusive relationship. What it means to be frozen. Actually, I think it's more about one of the things that might lead to uh, what makes a relationship abusive. Not that's how it was starting or that was this plan all along. Or it was a trap. More about why some good pe- why some people finally snap. The majority of this movie is actually more focused on Jack and his descent. Jack is Bert has never says any of the insults that feminists notice like calls her a sperm bake or a bitch to her face, only to the ghost, which are playing on it, or maybe you argue the ghosts are unreal during his head. And then we're also a product of stuff he's balling up, trying to keep out. Or trying not to do. Jack even has a nightmare about what he about for shine what he's going to do, which just scares him. See, he's scared of himself, or what he might do. He... And Jack is a mostly the movie of Jack being overborn and burdened by having to work, support the family, and knowing what he's done. Knowing what he's done. And the guilt of that, having to live with that, and being kind of reminded of that. Jack and Danny actually do have bonding moments. And yeah, come on, kids sometimes do see stuff. Kids do see somebody bring up age inappropriate topics or see stuff on TV. Uh, maybe sometimes the yeah, maybe a chamber can under very talk about with the kids. Ever what makes you debate that the ghosts are real, not just in his head, it because the ghosts are pretty much an escape for him. And the uh, they're, they're like, they, the Mater are playing on it. It's stuff already bottling, bottled up. It was already there, but bottled up. You say that we can't make abuser, abusers seem relatable. Because that would just, just seem like to abuse a watching that would justify it. On a con, to the contrary, relatable, uh, having the better to really see, people see themselves having unrelatable, than having unrelatable villain that he can't be, of course he's not me, he's evil. Even worse than later, you feel like you understand that you have moments where you can understand that villain, where you're pointing pictures. They did a Jew, and you can't relate to him at all. And but sometimes you get just get angry, and sometimes then we see that causing self fear, and a lot of men of you better. To either like show a different way or a positive way or what it might lead to, which is what this movie's trying to do. That one good thing about relatable villains, you could see make them seem like real people. What would really cause someone to go down this road? Not not just cookie cutter villains that are obviously evil because the movie needs a villain to so make them evil. This is a nostalgic point. Yeah. And kind of ironically, self fear is one of the plain plot, main plots of Frozen. Uh, just a joke here. Of course, there already are ghosts and demons playing on his head, unlike in Frozen. I'm messing with uh, uh, kind of like that uh, 
the id in a wrinkle in time or the men in black where you just looked see through you and play on your words feelings the common thing in stephen king's about ghosts doing that